we're going to be going over thigh palpation and a lot of these different muscle groups have been discussed in previous sections so i'm going to try to be as brief with them as possible i am going to skip over the uh, bony prominences because they have all been discussed before and how you identify them we're going to start on the anterior side so of the anterior muscles we're going to have the sartorius and then the four quad muscles of these two of them are biarticular and then the other three are uniarticular the first one is the sartorius so again you would come up and find their asis and then remember the sartorius is the longest muscle in the body it runs diagonally across the anterior aspect of your femur it's the most uh, superficial of all the muscles and then it's going to end down here on your medial anterior tibia at your pes anterine with two other muscles being your gracilis, which is your most superficial adductor muscle, and then your semitendinosus, which is one of your hamstring muscles. And we'll get to that one in just a second. But you need to know the name pes anterine, that all these three muscles go there. Sartorius is the longest and the most superficial of the anterior. So to be able to find that, again, find your ASIS and then come down uh, a little bit diagonally. And then this muscle really helps you do the figure four. So once you're on that muscle, you would just resist and you should be able to feel that muscle come up really, really nice. It should just kind of pop out as you're palpating it. And if you want, you should be able to follow it all the way down their anterior femur as they do this. Most human beings, if you look at their, their anterior thigh, the sartorius doesn't just like jump out at you and you're like, whoa, that's a huge, beautiful sartorius. It doesn't work like that. It's a pretty thin, small muscle, but it's very important in stability of our hip and lots of motion. So it does hip flexion. It does hip external rotation. It also helps with adduction a little bit. And then and adduction is kind of a weird muscle. And it also helps with knee flexion as well as rotation. So it does a whole bunch of crazy stuff and it's a good muscle to know. The next one we have is the rectus femoris. So you have your ASIS, which is the bone that really sticks out on your hip. And then what you're going to do is come inferior and then come medially a little bit. And you should find another bony protuberance that sticks out. And it's, it's not gonna like just jump at you. It's not super big like the ASIS is, but this is the origin for your rectus femoris. And once you're on it, you would ask them to just really gently flex their hip and you should be able to feel that muscle tightening and you should be able to follow it all the way down. It is the most superficial of your four quads. And again, it's a biarticular because it crosses your hip joint. It's a major hip flexor. And then it also becomes part of your conjoined quad tendon all four of your quads come together to be your super patellar tendon. They run down and encapsulate your patella, which is your largest sesamoid, and then form your inferior patellar tendon and insert on your tibial tuberosity. So all of your quads have the exact same insertion and the same quad tendon, just their origins and some of their actions are a little bit different. Laterally, and I'll palpate the lateral lateralis, so we have three vastus after that. The vastus lateralis is the muscle that runs down the side and you can kind of see her little divot right here that runs down and as people are running or squatting, you can really see them very well. This muscle is going to come down off the lateral aspect and anterior of your femur and run laterally down, which is why it's called the lateralis, become part of that same tendon. And so if you ask people to contract, especially do some kind of like knee extension stuff, you should be able to see it contract and palpate it as you do that. It has nothing to do, by the way, with hip flexion. Nothing. Only knee extension. Then we also have the VMO. And I call this like your biker muscle. If you do squats, biking, that kind of thing, it's usually pretty like rotund and you can see it very well. People that love to do squats and knee extension exercises, you can see it super well on them a lot of times. So same kind of thing, you would have them do that same kind of knee extension activity. So either you can put your arm underneath and ask them to push up and try to simultaneously palpate it, or you can have them sit at the end of the table and do it. But this should be on the medial aspect of your rectus femoris. That's really coming straight down the middle of your upper leg. The last one is tricky. You need to know it. You need to know its origin and its insertion and its name. 
and also that you cannot palpate it. It is your vastus intermedius. It lies deep to all three of these muscles and it lies just superficial on the anterior side of your femur to your femur. That was awkward, sorry. But it also helps with knee extension. It's the weakest of the three and if they hurt it, you're never gonna know it because you're never gonna be able to palpate it. They'll just complain of general quad pain and really it doesn't matter, you're gonna treat them all the same. The thing about the lateralis and vastus, or the vastus lateralis and the vastus medialis that I think that you should pay attention to is how they do help some or are focused on when you're doing internal or external rotation of the lower leg. In truth, they really don't help at all with rotation of the leg, but if I put her into a flexed position and then I externally rotate her lower leg, she is going to put her vastus medialis on a stretch. So this is going to focus a lot more on the vastus medialis. If I put her lower leg into internal rotation, it's going to put her vastus lateralis on a stretch and it's going to focus on that. If I have it in the middle, it will hit both of these equally and hit the rectus femoris. So if you're trying to isolate one of these muscles, if you're doing squats or leg extension, knee extension kind of exercises, um, lunges, whatever, it matters what position the lower leg is if you're trying to really isolate a particular muscle as you're doing that. Um, for the adductors, like I said, the gracilis is the most superficial and it's just going to run right down the center of your lower or your upper leg. And again, insert on your pes anserinus or pes anserine, depending upon who you're talking to. Then you also have several other adductors. So your adductor brevis, which we talked about with the femoral triangle, your longus also in there, and your magnus. The magnus is the biggest of them and also the most posterior. You also have some other smaller muscles like the pectineus, which we talked about in the triangle as well. So of these, I just need you to know that they're on the inside, their origins, insertions, and actions. Some of them, so where, they, where they're located and what they help you do. But as far as palpation, just know that they're all medial. Most of them are coming off your pubic tubercle or something up in there, and then they're attaching somewhere on your femur. So make sure you understand that. But as far as having you try to figure out how to palpate each one separately, um, it's really hard to do, and for the, this class, it's just not realistic. So then if you'll go ahead and roll over. Our hamstrings are the last thing that we have, and for these, your hamstrings, remember, all three of them are biarticular muscles. Technically though, there are four muscle bellies because the biceps femoris has a long head and a short head. The long head comes off the ischial tuberosity, same as both of the semimembranosus and tendinosus. The short head comes off the posterior uh, lateral aspect of the femur. When we are palpating these, the biceps femoris is our most lateral of these muscles. Then we have the semitendinosus and then the membranosus. The membranosus is the most medial and also it's deep to the tendinosus. When you are going to palpate these, you can kind of start in the middle if you want, or you can start off the ischial tuberosity or down low. They, all of them are going to come up and resist, or well, they're gonna do knee flexion. So you can palpate all of them just by doing knee flexion in general. The uh, semitendinosus often kind of sticks out a fair amount just because it's central and we can see it, but depending upon how people have been working out, they might be a little bit different. Now, if I want to focus on either our lateral biceps femoris or our medial semitendinosus and membranosus, I can change what's happening, again, same as I did on the anterior side, by rotating their lower leg. So if I rotate and I put her into an externally rotated position, and I push down, what I'm going to notice is, and this is kind of opposite of what we did on the anterior side, external rotation helps us focus on this bicep femoris tendon and it really, really sticks out. And then if I do internal rotation, I'm gonna feel just the opposite. And she's not even hardly contracting, but her semi-tendinosis uh, tendon is like super kicked out right now. And then the membranosus is gonna be a little bit medial to that. The tendinosus tendon should be very easy to palpate, and it's named that because the muscle belly is kind of short. It has a very long tendon, and remember, that's the one that wraps around to the anterior side to get to your pes anserine. So understand that these muscles actually do help with rotation. You should know that. That's important, and they also play into the mechanisms. They also, 
the long head of the biceps femoris and then the semi membranosus and tendinosus also help with hip extension so you could support the superior iliac crest the posterior side and then ask her to pull her leg up and look at this but just remember if our knee is extended we're really focusing on the hamstrings if we ask her to flex her knee and do hip extension Again, we're really focusing on the gluteus maximus. So the position that you have the person in with their knee is going to matter if you're focusing up here when you're assessing the muscle or if you're focusing down here. And then as you change the internal and external rotation of the lower leg, again, it's even going to more matter or help you isolate if you're looking at the lateral bicep femoris or the medial semitendinosus and membranosus. Um, just really quick, don't forget to that, and when we get to the knee, we'll talk about how the calf muscles, I, um, the gastrocnemius, crosses the knee as well. So they are going to crisscross with those hamstring tendons as they come down and insert onto the tibia, okay?